This video is HF antennas, tuners. So what does it do? How does it work? How do I use it? And why do I want one? What an antenna tuner actually does is it tricks the radio into thinking that it has a perfect antenna attached to it. In a perfect world, we could literally connect the radio to the SWR bridge to the antenna, and everything would work perfect. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. There is where an antenna tuner can help. The antenna tuner can broaden the bandwidth of your antenna. It can also help you tune your coaxial fed dipole that isn't quite perfect because of the environment that it's in. Some tuners can actually tune all kinds of stuff due to multiple antenna outputs. They can tune a 450 ohm ladder line dipole. They'll even let you tune the fence in your backyard. They'll even let you tune up a flagpole or a soccer backstop, but you can't really tune a fish. So what does a tuner actually do? Well, it actually transforms, similar to the adapter that you plug into the wall to charge your cell phone with, where the power adapter takes 110 volts and changes it into about five volts. There's two basic types of antenna tuners. There's the T-network tuner and the Pi-network tuner. The most common is the T-network tuner. The T-network is a very simple system. It uses a coil to ground, a capacitor to the radio, and a separate capacitor to the antenna. So what's it look like inside? We have the coil to ground, we have the capacitor going to the radio, and the capacitor connected to the antenna. The proper way to connect an antenna tuner is to go from the radio to an SWR bridge to the antenna tuner, then to the antenna. Okay, let's tune this baby up. First of all, we're going to take the antenna tuner, and we're going to take the antenna knob and the transmitter knob, and we're going to put those straight up and down. The next thing is to turn on the radio and find a frequency that's not in use. Next, what we need to do is turn the roller inductor until we get to the loudest volume. At this point, make sure that your transmitter is on AM. Also, make sure that it's on low power. Key the transmitter, identify yourself with your call sign, and watch the meters. And 9 LVS testing. So now we're in the ballpark. The SWR is still pretty high. I always adjust the antenna knob first and get that as close as I can get it. Then I use the transmitter knob second to get the lowest SWR possible. And 9 LVS testing. And 9 LVS testing. Now turn the radio to the operating mode you plan on using and find the elusive QSO. Once you get to your final frequency location, the first time you transmit, take a close look at your SWR and make any needed changes at that point. I hope this video has been helpful. And 7.3s from N9LVS.